In the late afternoon on Holy Thursday, I had the great privilege of visiting a dear friend of mine who was dying. I took the car and drove to a little house in Evanston, climbed up the stairs to his room, and there, lying in bed, was my good friend, Father Joe, a priest of almost 65 years. Father Joe was weak, tired, and in a lot of pain, though he tried to hide this from me as best he could. We talked briefly. I gave him communion on that day, the birthday of the priesthood. After communion, his breathing calmed, and he began to talk to me about the priesthood, how much it meant to him, how it gave him so much joy, and how I and other priests we're called to pour ourselves out as an oblation, as an offering for the church. We need more good shepherds, Lord knows especially these days. The church desperately needs young men to not step up, but run into the breach. Young men to shepherd well. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be a good shepherd? Sure, shepherds do all those cute little things that are on holy cards in bookstores, carrying the little lamb on their shoulders, leading their flock to green pastures, defending from the wolf that seeks to de devour them. These are all things that shepherds do. But to be a good shepherd, our Lord tells us to be a good shepherd he must offer his life for his sheep. Be willing to suffer and die in order that they may live. For all of you young boys and young men out there sitting in the pews before me, I want you to listen. The church needs you. She needs you to offer your lives for her. Perhaps you've already noticed a stirring in your heart. Maybe you've ignored it and shoved it down somewhere. Maybe that calling will just begin to blossom this very day. Regardless, it is never too late and it is never too early to begin discerning a vocation. And if you're debating whether it's time or not, it is time to make a decision and commit. I hate fences. It's time to get off them. We need young men to wake up at 2 a.m., shower and dress and drive across the city while everyone else is safe in their beds in order to anoint someone's grandmother because she took a turn for the worst. We need young men to preach boldly from the pulpit to inspire the faithful towards virtue and challenge them in their vices. We need young men to sit for hours in the confessional, freeing hundreds and thousands from the chains of sin by those simple yet sacred words, I absolve you from your sin. We need young men to radiate joy, proclaiming Christ in both word and action visible signs to the world, present for the highs of baptisms and wedding days, and for the lows of that ER room where a teen has just committed suicide. We need young men to pray their bravery faithfully, to meditate often, to celebrate Mass reverently and devoutly, and to believe in what he does. And my dear friends, we need young men to suffer, to go without sleep, to form disciplined habits, to carry the spiritual and sometimes emotional weights of a parish, to be spit upon in public, slandered in online comments, endure false accusations, betrayed by brothers, and if the time comes, we can all kind of sort of feel it coming to offer their lives in martyrdom. 
What do we need? We need young men to love and to love well, like a father, like a good shepherd, like a priest. Now, I say all of this with extreme humility, terrified and overwhelmed at the awesome responsibility that's about to be placed on me in just a few days. I am a very weak man. And I gotta tell you, I cannot do this alone. I need help. I need brother priests. And so, if we all agree that we are in such great need of good shepherds in the church, what in the world are we doing to create them? How are we encouraging young men around us to step up? Are we praying actively for priests? Are we living Christian lives that foster and promote and support vocations? Or are we tearing down vocations by gossiping? Are we afraid to talk about priesthood in our own families, ashamed of it, ashamed of what some priests have done, too dismissive of the importance of such a vocation? A man never ascends the altar on his own. Instead, an entire community, a family of baptized, stands around him, and together they offer him up to the Father as a living oblation, as a living sacrifice. Are each of you willing to make that offering to God, perhaps even from your own family? What a truly priestly action that would be for all of you. A few days later, after that afternoon visit on Holy Thursday, Father Joe passed away surrounded by his family, Lisa and Alan. For 65 years, he poured himself out for the church. His was a life of great suffering. Think of all that he had been through since his ordination in 1956. But his was also a life of immense joy. It's not an easy life, Nathan, Father Joe would often say to me, but it's a good one, and I'd do it all over again if I had the chance. <laughs>